What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be discussing the City vs. Country Collingwood Intra Club match from last night. So let's run the intro, jump straight into it. <laughs> Just before we do jump straight into it, of course, follow me on all my social media accounts. So Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, of course, posting daily. TikTok, not really posting on there, but follow me anyway. But if you are a new sweeper, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell if you're liking what I'm putting out. And if you are a returning sweeper, welcome back. Thank you so much for all your comments and your likes and your subscribes. It really means the world to me. So let's jump into this intra club match now. So yesterday, Collingwood uh, split into an intra club match. It was City versus Country, the white uh, jumper versus the black jumper. Brody Grundy was captain. Sanderson and Skipworth were coaching both sides. So Buckley took a step back. Uh, side bottom and Pendles co-captain uh, one of the sides as well. It was a really good hit out by all accounts. I wasn't there, but a couple of uh, swoopers were there. And, and they're posting on Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that. And uh, Collingwood did a nice write-up about it. But there were some really good things to take from yesterday's match. Brendan Sanderson came out and said that, you know, usually in intra-club matches, the, the foot comes off the gas a little bit. They're not going that hard. There's not a lot of pressure. But by all accounts, the boys were just hit, 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 and hit. They were just going hard. The full-time scores was 101 to 94. So it was a really close game. And they were high high-scoring game and a highly accurate game. Like... City kicked 16-5, 101, and Country was 14-10, 94. So, 14-10 is still pretty good. There wasn't a lot of times last year where... Well, there was a lot of times, but we're known for our behinds, kicking more behinds than goals. But 16 goals, 5, if you can put that up, you know, not week in, week out, because that's, that's uh, not possible. But if you put that up for most weeks, every one, every two weeks, or something like that, that's a very good return. Let's talk about first some of our draftees that really shown and everyone is raving about. First up, Finlay McRae. We think that he's going to get an early season uh, debut, getting a lot of ball, a lot of run like we know he's going to, much like his brother built for um, our sort of speedy game and that run that Trelaw used to give us. We could find it with McRae. Another one, Bo McCreary. I absolutely love this kid, how he goes about it. 19-year-old from South Australia. You're going to hear that name a lot. A potential round one debut as Stevenson replacement, right? So yesterday, awesome set shots. Very good at his tackling pressure and uh, and knowing where the ball is, getting that ball. He is built like a kid that's ready to make a run into the AFL. So a round one or two debut could be on the cards for Bo. Another one who came out of left field a bit was our first draft pick, um, Ollie Henry, brother of uh, Jack Henry from Geelong. Our key position forward that you know we could see uh, butting up with Will Kelly as well for the next 10, 12, 15 years or whatever it may be. We know that key position forwards take a lot of time to come into their own, but the Herald Sun wrote up you know a couple of more articles. Ollie Henry kicked two goals and he looked every bit ready to make his round one debut. And I know I just said McCray, I know I just said McCreary, but everybody, and I'm talking everybody, is praising the way Ollie Henry went about it last night. And two goals, he um, partnered up really well with Majek because they were in the same team. He was named in uh, the country's best as well. So, you know, with it, with, you know, country had obviously superstars on their team. But to be named in your best, in your pretty much your first sort of unofficial official hit out, is phenomenal. And let's see how he uh, matches up against Geelong next week in that uh, first practice match, which will be on the Collingwood website. So make sure you stick around for that. They haven't announced it yet, but I'm telling you, it will be on the Collingwood website as a stream. Let's see how he does there, and then let's see how he does in that first Amy match. We could have we could have a nice key, key position forward on our hands. Dacos started off the game very, 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 very super duper duper lively. Kicked three goals in that first quarter. He only played half a, a game as well. Just management. Same with uh, Will Kelly. Same with Jordan Dugowie. Jordan Dugowie, midfield. Midfield, midfield, midfield. That is all he was doing. He slimmed down a lot as well. Uh, kicked a nice goal outside of 50 from, you know, from all uh, reports, but 
He is now a hunter in the middle. He was good last year in the middle. Wasn't doing as much as we wanted. He slimmed down a lot. He's taking a little bit more, not even a little bit more, he's taking a lot more seriously. And this could be the renaissance of Jordan Dugowie, the midfielder. He could, he might be the next Dustin Martin. Let's hope, you know, three premierships. Did have, they won three? Yeah. Let's hope three premierships, you know, under his belt as well and a couple of normies. But Jordan Dugowie, the midfielder, be ready for that uh, AFL, be, uh, the AFL will, because there is going to be Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Just a quick sidebar. I'm getting some of my notes from Gen2310 over on uh, Twitter and Bigfooty. She is one of the best. Goes to all the training sessions. Went to yesterday's game. So, Jen, this video could not have been done without you. Thank you for uh, all your notes. By all reports, Tyler Brown and Callum Brown were on fire last night. And look, take this not with a grain of salt or not with a pinch of salt because... It is an intra-club match. They still want to put um, their best foot forward to get game time. So this isn't an easy game to play. So Callum and so saying Callum and Tyler were on fire, they were on fire in the wing, uh, in the middle as well. you got to think that now with Trelaw out, there is a, a nice... And now with Wills out as well, there are two nice spots in that midfield um, up for grabs. And Callum has to take his game to the next level. Tyler's got a, a little bit left, you know, to develop in. But Callum has to take his game to the next level, which he wasn't doing last year. But by all accounts, he had a great game um, yesterday, tackling and stuff like that. That's all we'd like to see, head over the ball sort of stuff, like all Browns do, you know. Um, we He just needs to take his game to the next level. And let's hope, let's hope he does that this season. Also, I keep saying by all reports, but, you know, all I can go is by all reports because uh, I wasn't watching the game. Grundy played a great game. And great as in, you know, 2018 great Grundy. Uh, maybe 2019 as well, but mainly 2018 great uh, Grundy. Dominant in the ruck, going up against Cameron, taking marks. He kicked City's um, goal that put him in the lead, that sealed the sealed the game, kicked the, the game winner pretty much. Uh, dominant. If Callum Brown needs a monster year, Grundy needs a double monster year. Last season, we knew uh, we know he didn't do well. He apparently, he wasn't carrying an injury because nothing came out. We don't know why. Just had a down year. Hubs, whatever, COVID. Sure. He needs a double monster of a year. He's got six years left of his contract. We know he's the when he's on, he is the best ruckman in the game. And one of the best midfielders as well because that's what Grundy does. He is going to dominate. He, he'll make all Australian this year. That's, that's my very early call. Another quick couple as well. Side bottom playing uh, in the wing as well and, and in the midfield. He's another one that um, I can't wait to see. We really missed him last season. Pendlebury played the entire session. He's 30-something, but you look at him and you go, Jesus, this guy's got another 10 years left of um, AFL footy because he's just there's no just... No stopping him. Trey Rusko's put on a little bit of muscle, getting more uh, physical as well. He could be the Stevenson replacement that we saw, that energetic, exciting footballer that Stevenson was in 2018. Rusko could be that in uh, 2021 for us. Sire um, did well. Will Huskin Elliott, uh, good mark. He needs another big season. Cox taking mark, kicked two goals in the last quarter. Look, I just wanted to make this quick video just to go over. Just, I'm so excited. Yes, th there might be a little bit of video footage later. I know it wasn't streamed and stuff, but you can't stream every sort of intra-club match or every training session as well. But I am just, I am elated. And I know uh, on Swoop Luke, my Instagram and on YouTube as well, it's been a little bit different uh, leading up to it. Videos that I didn't want to, not that I didn't want to make, but you know, videos that had to be made um, were made. But now... With this is the catalyst. It is going to be uh, all 2021 positivity coming from uh, Swoop Luke right now. I, um, God, I am so excited for this season. And this this write-up from Jen, the write-up from uh, Collingwood. We're, we, want, we might be in for uh, a treat, but I will talk about that on a later video. Look, leave your comments below. Did you go to the game? Let me know below. Did you hear about... Who who was your favorite player that you that you that you heard about from you know from Jen or from what I've been saying? Who do you want to see impress this season? Which one of the new kids are you looking forward to the most? But look, 
Until next time, like, comment, subscribe. Tay family, tay friends, tay pets. Double shackers. I'll sweep you later. Ooh la la.